are doing a really exciting uh, business, making vegan candles, vegan products, eco products. So we have lots to talk about. Please stay tuned. We will be right back. Hi, good morning everyone. This is Seeking Sustainability Live number 77 and we are trying to talk with people around Japan who are doing interesting things better for the environment, better for our communities, trying to balance people, planet and profits. So thank you so much for joining us, Alex. Thank you for having me. So you're based in Hokkaido, right? Yeah, we live in the Tokachi region of Hokkaido. We're actually in a very small, small village of under 5,000 people. And uh, the biggest city in Tokachi is only 250,000 people, and that's about an hour away. So oh, wow. we're pretty far out. Yeah. yeah. How long have you lived there? Um, we've lived here since November, actually. The end of November, December. And... Uh, when we first came here in December, we were living in my wife's grandmother's house for a month before we got our own place. And, oh, yeah. And since, since New Year's, actually, New Year's Day, we moved into our own place. Wow, great. And you guys met, I met, I read your profile, you guys met in Canada as you were woofing, right? Yeah, exactly. So at the time, my wife was uh, on a working holiday visa in Canada so she studied English for a few months in Toronto and then she went backpacking around Canada and at the time I had this dream of going hitchhiking that I kind of had for a while and I just decided to do it and then we met Wolfing in BC on an organic vegetable farm uh, way out in uh, I guess in a small area close to the American border but yeah we met at uh, this organic vegetable farm at the time and then we went and traveled around hitchhiking together in BC. Wow, how exciting. And then you started making candles in Canada or did you start once you came to Japan? Yeah, in 2017 I moved to Japan and uh, we were actually living in Funabashi in Chiba and uh, at the time my wife had an interest in candles and then she decided uh, since we were in the Tokyo area, she decided just to learn how to make it. So she studied uh, at a few different few different places around Tokyo. And then uh, we had our wedding in 2018, and she made all the candles for our wedding. Wow. And so many people thought they were great. And that was the first time she had to make a lot of them. She made over 100. And uh, then I kind of pushed her. I said, yeah, you're really good at this. People like them. I think you should try and do a small business. So then on the weekends, we went uh, to events around Tokyo uh, and we would uh, sell them at little handmade markets and stuff. And then we made our own website and just gradually we built it up bit by bit. Yeah, that's wonderful. I've got your About North Candles profile here from Facebook. Sure. Um, North Candles, handmade candles created by Mommy and Alex couple from Canada, Hokkaido. We started North Candles in Tokyo and now yeah. live in Hokkaido. So you guys were based in Tokyo for a while? Yeah, we were there from 2017 until uh, last summer, so 2019. So about two years we were there. And then uh, we went to Canada for six months, half a year, and we stayed with my family. And uh, we were there just for our own, uh, I guess, family reasons. We went back to Canada. But at the time, uh, we thought, oh, we're here for six months. Why don't we try and uh, continue our business in Canada since so many of our friends and family had been seeing them um, on Facebook and Instagram? We decided that we'd just give it a shot. And uh, thankfully, that was uh, a, like it went really well when we were in Canada. And there were some local events that we were able to sell them, uh, sell them at and also online to friends and family. And uh, yeah, at that time, my wife went from making them inside of our tiny apartment to making them inside my parents' living room right beside <laughs> the front window. So that was like a, a pretty big change, but uh, we were pretty thankful that we had a place that we could do it and obviously you know my parents were 
really uh, understanding and helpful, letting us make candles all day in, <laughs> in their living room. But I'm sure I'm sure they didn't mind the smell, I guess. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, that's like whenever I walk into Lush, I'm always like, right. well, you know, there's worse places to work where you come home smelling like this, you know? Yeah, that's definitely true. <laughs> I'm showing your uh, North Candles Instagram and Facebook to top of the page. That's an easy place for people to find out more about you guys, right? Yeah, it is. On Facebook, I think it's just North Candles. And on Instagram, it's North underscore Candles. And uh, our website, northcandles.jp, also has some information in English and Japanese about us. Nice. Um, I got a comment so far. Julian says, hi, kitty. Yes, you can hear my rescue kitties behind <laughs> us. Uh, if, if I see them in the back, I'll, I'll show them to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Choco is still crying for mama. She's, she's still not used to us yet. Right. Um, <laughs> your Instagram page of the North Candles shows the beautiful variety of candles you guys made and all the amazing dried flowers your wife is using yeah yeah she definitely i i think she's pretty modest uh and uh she wouldn't give herself too many compliments but i'm always full of compliments that's for sure and i think she does a great job at making them and uh yeah she's definitely got a a good sense for the arrangements yeah i think so and uh, she did some workshops, it looked like? Yeah, we were just talking about my wife recently started doing some workshops as well. So other people in our area can start uh, making their own candles, which is a lot of fun. Uh, it's fun for kids too, because uh, usually we get some moms and the kids that come together and they can do it together and make a candle and they have a lot of fun choosing the flowers and yeah that's nice has she transitioned into online workshops during the coronavirus or is that too hard yeah we haven't done that because uh we kind of thought about it for a bit but we didn't really know because the way it works is people have the opportunity to choose like the flowers that they want and the scent that they want and to do it online if there wouldn't be a lot of option uh yeah. like uh so yeah we kind of just not gone that direction. Yeah. One thing that uh, sustainable fashion designer Clementine of Mikan Bags did is she was doing online workshops, um, sending all the materials in advance, and mm. then after a week doing it online, so walking people through the steps. I don't know if that would work with candle making, maybe a bit too messy. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting idea. Um, I'm not sure how it would work, but it might be something that we would think about going forward. But it looks like in your, or in your wife, mommy's studio, she has all the beautiful dried flowers, all the materials that you need. Yeah, exactly. She has, uh, she has like so, such a variety of flowers and smells and it's just, uh, really easy to get that, uh, like in person, I guess it's a lot easier for people to make their choices. And you did a, a fair, Richmond Fair in Canada, is that right? Yeah, exactly. That was actually in my hometown, which was our first big event in Canada. And that would have been a year ago in September. And uh, it went really well. Lots of my family and friends came by and it was a great opportunity to see some old faces and catch up with lots of people. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. How fun. And then in Japan as well, have you done any fairs or markets? Yes, we did a lot in Tokyo uh, last year and, and the year before. And then when we came back to Japan, uh, we started our business back up in December, and then we were able to do some local events for a few months up until March, I believe, and then that's when the uh, the shutdown started happening. So after that point, we haven't done any events yet since uh, March. Um, who knows when things will get going back up, but whenever they do, we're definitely looking forward to doing that. What is, I mean, can you give us a little introduction? What's the difference between a soy candle or a vegan candle and a standard candle? 
Right. Yes. Yeah, so soy candles are made from uh, obviously soy wax, uh, which is derived from the uh, oil of soybeans. And we use 100% soy wax in uh, all of our candles. Um, most traditional and common candles are made from paraffin wax, which is derived from petroleum. And uh, yeah, that's something most people don't know is a lot of the candles you'd buy at a store are actually derived from petroleum. And then you go and burn that inside of your house, uh, which is obviously, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say it's uh, it's the way to go for somebody who wants to use a scented candle but uh, we use a hundred percent soy wax in our candles and uh, even some candles that you find at a store that are soy wax candles they're actually usually mixed with paraffin wax as well because the paraffin wax can absorb more of the scent than uh, soy candles does. So it actually makes it cheaper for large companies to mass produce a mix of soy wax, paraffin wax candle, because they don't have to use as much as the scent to get the stronger smell, and uh, then they can make it cheaper, obviously. But we use 100% soy wax in our candles, and one of the benefits of soy wax is obviously it's a cleaner... Uh, cleaner wax that you're burning in your house but also it burns at a lower temperature than paraffin wax so it burns slower and for a longer time so you can enjoy your candle for a longer period of time than if you were using a paraffin wax candle that's really interesting it's it's just something I think most people don't realize or don't think about when they yeah, buy candles definitely. yeah well, you would never think you're burning a uh, wax as of derived from petroleum like mm -hmm. I, I was pretty shocked when I learned that the first time yeah and uh, yeah soy wax is definitely the best wax obviously we're vegan there's other waxes that aren't derived from petroleum that I like for example beeswax uh, but beeswax is uh, obviously not vegan and my wife and I both being vegan we want to stick to 100% soy wax and then the other thing is there's palm wax but palm wax is usually taken from uh, Malaysia and Indonesia, I believe, and that kind of affects the local farmers in the area who have to focus on building palm trees instead of uh, whatever they would locally grow there naturally. Yeah, palm oil is uh, a big environmental concern, yeah. and palm oil is in everything. It's in yeah. all sweets and snacks and everything, so it's definitely something to try to avoid if you can. Yeah. Um, I'm showing right now the Halloween candles. Now you oh, have yeah. you have glass containers, but you also have like a really nice reusable metal container. Yeah, we those pictures would be from Canada last year, mm -hmm. and uh, we have um, yeah we have glass containers uh, with uh, with uh, metal lids, and they're great because we we use them and you can send them back to us and we can make candles again or you can uh, just uh, clean it out and reuse the container yourself and then we also have aluminum containers as well that can be used and the same thing you can send them back to us or continue to use them for whatever you want yeah it looks like you guys are quite talented at making beautiful like scented candles but also really cute candles as well like different designs and everything yeah well especially my wife she has the knack for that and i guess halloween's coming up kind of soon so i'm sure she'll be getting some new ideas in the next couple months and then after that it'll be christmas and then that's kind of like the big season that uh where she, I, I guess she'll want to show her creativity. <laughs> yeah, how fun. Yeah, Halloween and then Christmas is a very popular time for candles, both, both holidays. Um, yeah. How do you guys source your soybeans? I always find it hard to get soybeans. Is that a trade secret you can't tell us? <laughs> well, we actually get, we get our materials from a company in Japan who sources it from America mostly. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's, I guess, uh, this local company in, in uh, Japan, but they get everything from a New York-based company that is connected to farmers in America. Yeah. And then we just get everything through them. I wish we grew more soybeans in Japan. Um, that's, that's a really interesting story about Kikoman soy sauce. 
And the, right. the reason he moved operations to the U.S. was because soybeans were grown there. And soybeans are just right. not grown in Japan. And that was many years ago. Well, that's interesting because uh, even the amount of food in general that's grown in Japan, I think most like 70% of the food here is imported, I believe. So not just soybeans, but almost everything in general here. Yeah. It would be great if um, we had more food security in terms of things being grown here. Oh, I have the, the metal containers of the, it's like a twisty metal container, is that right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's just like a twist lid. And I think those ones are four ounce ones. And then mm -hmm. we're also working on getting some eight ounce ones in the near future. What's What's your price range? I don't have any of the prices on screen right now. Uh, the, there's like a big difference. I think they go from around 900 yen to about 3,000 yen in general. That's kind of the price range. Mm -hmm. And then shipping uh, around Japan. Do you ever ship abroad as well? Uh, yeah, we have in the past. That's kind of more on a contact us and we'll work something out basis for shipping abroad. We've made it work with some friends and family in North America and we've had some customers in Korea and Singapore and other countries where we've been able to do that. The countries in Asia are obviously cheaper to ship to than North America. And then uh, in Japan, it's pretty affordable to ship anywhere. Nice. Um, shipping, of course, even during coronavirus was really tricky. A lot of companies were saying um, all shipping basically stopped for a while. But it seems like it's kind of resumed, but within Japan would be your main market, I would assume. Exactly, yeah. Uh, we haven't had too many problems because uh, obviously most of our customers are domestic in Japan, so it hasn't been too much of an issue. It was slower for a while, uh, but we never had any problems getting anything to the customers, just a few delays here and there. Nice. Where does your wife get all the beautiful flowers? Uh, she gets them. There's a, a company in Tokyo when we live there that she connected to. And uh, it's a company that is designed to distribute to businesses. And uh, they source all their flowers. And then you can go. We would actually go to the store when we were in Tokyo. And it, it's in, um, I can't remember the name of the, the station, but it's on the Sobu line. Uh, and uh, it's actually like a huge five-story flower shop. Wow. And uh, all these different people in Tokyo who uh, use flowers in their businesses can go there and choose. And they have a website as well, so we're able to just get them to mail us the flowers we need, thankfully. So everything's dried already before you get it? Yeah, they, uh, they do all the drying and uh, then we can just go in there and choose. But we're actually hoping to, we, we've done it a little bit, but we're hoping to move on to doing all of our own original flowers as well. We finally have the space to have our own garden now since we're not in Tokyo anymore. So we're hoping that, yeah, we can continue to grow our own homemade uh, flowers and dry them ourselves and use them in our products. Yeah, that would be great. Especially being in Hokkaido. I mean, during the winter, maybe not many flowers, but during, yeah. <laughs> during the other seasons, you guys have a great variety of flora up there. Yeah, actually, and even just the wildflowers are beautiful. And because the seasons are so different from the rest of Japan, like obviously Honshu and Kyushu are pretty tropical weather, I would say, compared to Hokkaido. So we have like kind of the spring, the summer, and the fall flowers, which all just kind of, they're completely different colors and styles of flowers each season. So yeah, many years ago, my husband and I did a cycle trip around Hokkaido for six right. weeks. And it's amazing how similar it reminds me of to England, like the countryside and the rolling hills and and yeah. it was really beautiful. And then you have the dramatic coastline as well. Yeah, I, it's funny you say that because sometimes, I've never been to England, but sometimes when we're driving, I'll look at some hills in the distance. And I'll say, well, that looks like how I imagine England to, to look like. Yeah. Is it very different from where you grew up in Canada? 
Uh, actually, the area where we live now and the area where I grew up in Canada, I grew up in Ontario, and I would say Tokachi and Ontario look so similar. Uh, the weather is very similar, and just the look of the landscape is very similar. The only big difference is Tokachi has uh, lots of mountains, beautiful mountain range, and has the ocean close by, only 10 minutes away. But um, where I lived in Ontario, we were about a 20-hour drive away from the ocean and wow. even further away from any mountains. So Yeah. I love being near, we're in Hiroshima and being near the ocean and the islands and you can see the mountains and we have the rivers. So I think so many parts of Japan are so beautiful in that way. You have the mountains and not too far yeah. from the ocean, right? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. The landscape is just so diverse and you can get, in Canada, it's a huge country. So each area, I would say, kind of has a one type of landscape that goes on for uh you know, miles and miles and miles. But in Japan, it's just so many drastically different landscapes all pushed close together. So you can experience so many different beautiful places. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your new business. It's very exciting. Sure. Um, why did you decide to start? Give us some background. Sure. So last year when we were in Canada, we went to a zero waste store in my hometown that my younger brother Julian took us to. And then when we were there, we thought it was so cool. We were able to go grocery shopping and bring all of our own containers and everything had no packaging and it was exactly what we were looking for. And obviously living in Japan, it's no secret that there's a lot of issues with excess packaging and plastic waste and all this type of stuff. Uh, and that was something that we were always conscious of in Japan and, uh, then going to uh, my hometown and seeing this type of a store that had recently opened up that was so drastically different. It was so cool, we thought, and we just fell in love with this type of idea. And uh, we hadn't yet heard of anything in Japan happening like that other than a few small things going on in Tokyo. But as far as outside of Tokyo, there's not much going on like that. So we came back to Japan and uh, we were kind of trying to think more seriously about stuff we could do to do our part in raising an environmentally friendly, conscious thinking and just that type of stuff. And we really wanted to do something, but we weren't sure what. And then uh, we, we actually went and uh, saw a former CEO of Muji, if you, everybody in Japan usually knows the company Muji, we saw the former CEO Masaki Kanai from Muji speak and we actually were lucky enough to meet him and have a private talk with him. And uh, just after meeting him, we thought, oh, they started this huge company, Muji, uh, with only one store locally and then they were able to expand it to this huge company that's been able to have a huge impact on so many different things. Not to say Muji is a perfectly environmentally friendly company, but um, I think that they've done a lot of things. They've helped funded some projects that have done a lot of great things. And for them, just to hear about their journey, it kind of inspired us. Oh, we don't need to rely on these uh, bigger bigger corporations, I guess, do. We can just try and make our own way uh, and do it that way. And... Uh, it, we decided to start a business more so because there were a lot of things that we were using in our own life that people would ask us about. And where did you get this? Where did you get that? And they just weren't readily available in Japan. So we wanted to give uh, an opportunity to people who lived, especially in the more rural areas of Japan, where they might not be able to find this type of stuff. We wanted to give them an opportunity to have access to this stuff and kind of give them the opportunity for the first steps in moving towards a more eco-conscious lifestyle, I suppose. Definitely. Your story reminds me of uh, Jack Bales from Alishan Tengu. I, I've never heard of him, actually. Really? So yeah. Alishan Tengu has been a huge resource for vegetarians, vegans in Japan for over 30 years. 
And he's wow. he's based in Saitama, I believe, not too far from Tokyo. And yeah. he was in the series, and he's talking about the same thing. He was importing things for his vegetarian family, and right. he was starting to import for his friends. And then everybody's like, "Why don't you just order open a shop?" You know, so. Right. It comes out of like personal need and you know the typical entrepreneurship reason. So really great that you guys have started this. I'm it's it's gonna be such a great resource for so many people looking for zero waste or plastic free or less waste options in Japan. So let's go through some of the products that you guys have. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you have your candles. Um, yeah. Right, and you have unscented and scented. I'm showing on the screen now. Right, and different shapes. Kind of just a typical white candle is on your Echo Life yeah. shop. Is that right? Yeah, we we don't have a huge selection of candle on the Echo Life uh, website just because we kind of wanted to keep it simple for that one. And、um, if people got an interest, then they could go. To our other website for North Candles. So whenever people order candles or contact us about candles, we we、uh, will let them know. Oh, by the way, we also have this other shop here where you can find the rest of our candles.、Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about your vegan food wraps. Sure. So those are really exciting. We just started selling those. I I think.、Uh, About three and a half weeks ago, and they were something that、uh, we had been in the process of making for a long, long time. We,、uh, I guess, since January, we started making them the first time, and it was kind of a, a journey to say the least because we didn't. It took us about seven months to start selling them. Actually,、uh, there were a lot of challenges that we kind of didn't see happening, but.、Um, Yeah, we were we were able to just make it happen.、Uh, the biggest challenges, though, were the wax that we had to use and the, the recipes. I guess trying to get the perfect one because you would make them and they would do a great job at what we wanted them to do, but sometimes there would be like pockets of air in the wrap and it just didn't look so appealing. And then other times we would make them. And they wouldn't stick that well, and there were a bunch of challenges. But thankfully, they've gone really well. And actually, my wife just threw one into the room, so you can see them right here. And she also threw me a bowl, so I guess I can, <laughs> I can show you right here. So mommy example, doesn't want to just say hello. <laughs> she's not gonna come in. <laughs> she threw in some wax wraps in a bowl and then closed the door. But you can. <laughs> You can see we have、uh, one of our wraps right here, and then a bowl, and then you can just put it in, and、uh, you kind of press your hands around the bowl and let the heat of your hands mold the wax, and then it just covers up around the bowl like that. And、uh, it's a great alternative to plastic wrap because you can use them again and again, and they're also washable, so、uh, you can wash them no problem. In cold water,、um, yeah, it, we couldn't find these available in Japan. They were available using beeswax, but obviously, as vegans, we don't use beeswax. So we had heard of companies in Canada and Australia that were using、uh, vegan plant-based wax to do it. And then, since we already have the candle business, and my wife had some experience with. You know, wax and this type of stuff. We decided, oh, let's just try and make them ourselves. And thankfully, we were able to make them 100% vegan without the use of beeswax. And we decided that since we were looking for a long time for these type of products because the beeswax wraps were so useful, but not vegan, we just decided to try and share them with other people. Yeah, that's great.、Uh, we also had Marissa Gelengser、um, in the series. She does Echo Hachi, so using、uh, reusable wraps but using beeswax. And、uh, she was talking about the difficult process of figuring out how to make them. So、right. I'm I'm sure you know your process, even though the source material is a little bit different. The process is is really hard to work out. It sounds like. 
Yeah, I mean, it it was a challenge. So at the start, um, we tried such a wide variety of different uh, materials, like even just uh, different types of cotton and uh, trying to find the ones and the exact texture. There's a specific texture that you need to find in the fabric and like some of them don't work and some of them do. And at the start, we went out and we just chose the designs that we liked and we tried to make wraps out of those. And we found only, I think we chose 12 designs at the start and only four of them actually worked out. Wow. And uh, because the texture just doesn't match with the wax and uh, it doesn't blend well into the fabric. And then after that, we kind of got an eye for which types of fabrics we could use. And uh, then we were able to select more that were like that. Um, the hardest thing was getting a consistency, especially with the larger sizes, because, um, yeah, some of the, the larger sizes, actually, you need to, um, the way we make them is using a kind of an industrial heating iron and uh, heating the wax into the, the, the fabric so it blends into it. And uh, getting it consistent across the fabric, an even ratio of the wax across the fabric, was a challenge for the bigger ones. The smaller ones, it wasn't too difficult because um, it's such a small surface area. But the bigger ones, you really need to get it evenly across. And, uh, yeah, that was the biggest challenge. But now that it's kind of we found a way to do it, um, I rely on my wife for that portion of the the labor because she's a lot better than I am with handiwork so she I, I cut the fabric and I'll make the blend of the wax and materials and then she applies it to the fabric and packages them so the, the fabric selection is really beautiful where do you find your fabrics uh, we find them at uh, some local stores in our area and then uh, not all of them, but most of them come from local stores in our area. And then we also recently started selling some organic fabric, uh, organic cotton fabric that we source online from a Japanese company. And uh, we're hoping to move forward kind of in the organic cotton area. But at the start, we didn't have any selection in our area. And now we found some online. So we're going to continue to include more organic cotton options as we go on. That's great. And I was surprised I learned not too long ago that cotton and organic cotton is actually grown in some parts of Japan. Um, Imabari, which makes towels, uses local organic cotton for many of their towels. That's why it's a bit right. expensive. Um, it's not a big amount. I'm sure there's uh, bigger sources abroad that you would import, but it's nice to know some is grown in Japan. <laughs> yeah, the ones we bought in in uh, Japan from the Japanese companies are actually grown in Japan, but um, the price of them obviously is a lot more expensive than regular cotton, and uh, that price uh, is reflected in the retail price, obviously. Which it's kind of tough because we we want to make sure we can sell something that's affordable. So we've been trying to kind of find a balance between um, finding or locally sourced organic cotton and an affordable price for the customer to make them actually want to use them. So that's definitely been a challenge as well. Yeah, I think it's it's really beautiful. You guys have done a great job. I'm showing the. Uh, selection and the prices right now on the screen so you have a small medium large set that is 2,950 yen is that right yep that's correct and that one has three sizes there's the small size which is uh, 19 by 19 centimeters and then there's another size medium 24 by 24 and the large size which is 29 by 29 centimeters yeah, that's great. And people, you know, I mean, if you compare it to the price of plastic wrap, it's going to seem expensive. <laughs> but if you yeah. think if you think you're covering your food that you want to eat again and you don't have to get the plastic leaching onto it from your plastic wrap, you know, it yeah. just it feels better and healthier and you can use them for years. I have yeah. I have some of these wraps that I ordered 10 years ago from Australia before I could even find them in Japan, I'm still using them, so. Mm, exactly, yeah, they actually last a long time. Um, 
like we had some that we bought in Canada and I think that was two or three years ago and we still actually are able to use those ones and uh, we're actually planning on selling a refresh set too where we'll uh, sell the wax blend itself and people can uh, just put, uh, apply it themselves to refresh their wraps or make their own if they want uh, from their own recycled fabrics. Nice. That's a really good idea. To yeah. extend the life of any product, of course, is the most sustainable. Exactly. To use it as long as you can. Let's talk about some of your other products because I think you have a great selection for people trying to reduce waste. I like the coffee set. Can you introduce it? Yeah. Uh, is that our French press? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's great. So we use that ourselves, obviously. And uh, we uh, started using a French press um, when we were in Tokyo. And uh, then uh, we had we had it break, actually. The just I can't remember if it was dropped, but the glass part broke. And we were trying to think, oh, what can we do? And then uh, we found one that doesn't use plastic at all. And it's made from just glass, wood, and metal. And we thought that was great because we don't want to use plastic if we don't have to. And uh, we love the French press because you don't need to use coffee filters either. So we can just buy uh, coffee and then put it in and the water. And then there's no excess waste involved that way. And you can just make coffee. And it's also, I would argue, the easiest or laziest way to make coffee as well so that's great for us I love it I've been doing this for years and I just put the grinds right in into my potters for yeah. plants or right into the garden exactly. so it's I mean of course you have waste by getting the coffee to you um, coming yeah. from around the country but uh, around the world but after you know there really is a zero waste option with coffee press and of course the french presses you usually see have plastic components so this yeah. is a really nice version yeah exactly and like you said coffee grounds are great you can for people who are doing their own compost you can include the coffee grounds in your compost as well or just like directly on top of your plants and it provides nutrients to the plants it's nice to be able to use it in the garden and return some nutrients to your vegetables. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I, I did a tour in San Francisco of a waste uh, center called Recology, and he mm -hmm. was saying, I recommend French press to everybody in San Francisco because they're trying to do zero waste for such right. a big city. And he's like, if everybody just did French press, we would have and put the grounds in their plot, uh, you know, planters or yeah. garden, we would have so much less waste to deal with. Right. It makes exactly. a lot of difference. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Because if you think about if you're drinking coffee every day and using a coffee filter every day, then you're using 30 filters a month and then that will also have the plastic packaging that the filters come in and you can just skip that entirely by using a French press. Yeah, oh, we have a comment from Allison. Hi, Joy and Alex, your website is beautiful. Thank you so much. Have you been looking for local suppliers for these products? Yeah, we try to as much as possible. Like we really want to include, especially right now we have some handmade goods, obviously, that are just from my wife and I, but we want to really broaden our handmade selection going forward. Um, my wife's brother, actually, I kind of, I'm interested in selling some of his handmade goods because he makes uh, wooden cutlery, which is made from, he lives in Kyushu in Kumamoto, and he makes cutlery, which is made from trees that have fallen down during the typhoons because they get nasty typhoons there every year. But he uh, cuts those trees uh, that are kind of in uh, older people's backyards who can't move them, and then he'll recycle the wood into making cutlery. And I'm, I'm really interesting. He doesn't have an online presence, so I'm kind of interested in selling his stuff. And I'd love to find many other situations like that where we could kind of improve our handmade selection, but also give people access to Japan-based handmade artists as well. Definitely. And using Japan wood is such a great thing to do because there's a big problem with the forest needing to be more thinned. 
And yeah. there's still an idea that most of the wood is imported, even though it doesn't need to be. So right. if you if you can create a product like that using damaged tree wood from Kumamoto, I love that idea. Yeah, exactly. And especially, I mean, even in like like I briefly said, but in Japan, there's typhoons every year, and we've all seen trees that have fallen down, and uh, just. The idea of not using that wood for something is such a would be such a waste. So if if it can be reused, it definitely should be. Yeah, so. absolutely. Allison is also a Canadian, so oh, just cool. to give you some idea, uh, your next product is also made of wood. You've got hair brushes that look really interesting. Oh yeah, so those are cool because uh, they're made of wood. The liner is made of rubber, and then the um, the pins are made of bamboo, which is really cool because usually those are obviously made of plastic and made of bamboo is uh, pretty cool because the other thing that my my wife really likes about them, aside from being made of wood for an environmental reason, but because she says when she brushes her hair, you don't have to worry about static electricity in your hair, like the feeling of your hair getting all frizzy. So. That's another nice thing about those. Yeah, great. Are those um, imported from somewhere? Or yeah, made those, in? those ones in particular are imported actually because um, most of the products in Japan that use bamboo are actually not produced in Japan, which is unfortunate, an unfortunate reality. Um, we wish we could find bamboo products that were produced in Japan, but it's so rare because I, I'm not sure what's the reason. It might just be a cost thing, but I, I do think it's crazy that there's not a lot of manufacturers in Japan using bamboo just because it's so abundant. And actually, the thing with uh, bamboo is it's actually uh, an invasive species and it grows more and more every year. And it needs to be cut in so many areas every year. Like even in my uh, brother-in-law was telling me in Kumoto, he needs to go to uh, some older people's uh, houses and they need to cut bamboo along the property lines every year because wild boars will cut, live in the bamboo forest and get closer and closer to people's houses, which is dangerous. Wow. So they, yeah, they need to cut back the bamboo every year, but it grows so quickly that it's such a good renewable resource and they're so it's so abundant in Japan. I, I hope that there's more manufacturers. Yeah, because Japan. also when you remodel houses, in Hawaii, where I'm, I'm from, um, people often use bamboo flooring, bamboo walls, right. you know, yeah. and it's just not available here. And I, I always think that's crazy. And sometimes when I go to Hawaii, it says Japanese bamboo flooring, and I was like, from where? <laughs> yeah, I know. I want and, it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, I do think it's crazy because you can go anywhere in Honshu and Kyushu and see just like so much of it. And uh, I think uh, like a bamboo tree actually grows 80% of its size in uh, under one year. Yeah. Like it just grows so quickly and it's just in such a, like you see it, they're so densely like planted together that like yeah. it's such an abundant resource. And yeah, yeah. in terms of renewable sources of wood i mean i don't know how much better you can get than bamboo so it's, it's awesome i love to see bamboo used in products like this um the fridales who i interviewed who renovated a 130 year old japanese home wow. the, part of the property was just covered in bamboo and yeah. so they were fighting it for like six months trying to exactly. get it back and then whenever they have takenoko, the baby bamboo, yeah, yeah. they give it to the neighbors and the neighbors are like, thank you so much. You don't eat yeah. it. You know, like, so it was a really nice way for them to make the community feel nice about them being there. Yeah. Um, there's also a beautiful comb in the set. Yeah. Also, yeah. is that wood or bamboo? I can't That tell. one's made of wood, actually. There's the two bamboo ones and then there's one that's made of wood. And uh, I think that one, those are the only three we have, I believe. But there's mm -hmm. two that are bamboo-based and one wood-based. Yeah. And the, the price is really reasonable. The comb at the moment is under 1,000 yen, it looks like. Yeah, it is. The, I think the prices are pretty reasonable for those, especially because the quality is really good. Uh, we obviously want to sell stuff that people can use for a long, long time. We don't want to just be pushing 
I guess, cheap consumerist type type of stuff where people can use it for a short period of time and then it's not good anymore. So we just want to, that's kind of the main thing is we want to give people stuff that's a good quality that they can use it for a long, long enough time to make it worth it. That's great. Uh, let's talk about your travel set and the straw. Sure. Yeah. So those ones are also made of bamboo and they come in a cotton case. Uh, and then the straw, there's two options. There's one with a bamboo straw and one with a stainless steel straw. And uh, the stainless steel straw is really great. We use them all the time, uh, especially now that we're drinking lots of iced coffee in the summer. Um, I, I think it's really convenient because you can just uh, avoid using disposable plastic cutlery, especially like so many people uh, get takeout or people who go even buy their lunch at the convenience store, which is so common in Japan, uh, you can avoid, they'll just throw plastic cutlery in the bag every time automatically, but it gives you an option to just avoid that. Yeah. Even, I mean, there's so much takeout happening right now because of coronavirus, but even if yeah. you just bring your own hashi wrapped, yeah. wrapped in furoshiki, which I, exactly. I have, and because I have kids, I have to have three sets with me right. all the time, and then I have my reusable straws in there as well. Um, you know, but what having the, this kind of set is really useful and really nice. I love it. Yeah, exactly. And again, it's just nice that people to give people this option because, uh, like so many people, I think they wouldn't even think about it. It's just something that would come and you, if you're buying your lunch every day, that's like five sets of plastic cutlery a week right, and then yeah. like. 20 a month which is just so much when you think about it and you can just yeah. cut that out entirely so you can't say no to the box of food right for a takeout but you can say no to cutlery so it's it's just another way to use a little bit less waste create exactly. a little bit less waste right exactly um yeah so awesome i love the set where is that imported from i heard these aren't really made in japan some of the other shops were saying yeah, unfortunately, that's another thing because that's another bamboo product. So most of them are imported from other Asian countries uh, like China or uh, I guess China or uh, what's the other country? Thailand? Indonesia? No, I think Vietnam and uh -huh. Indonesia. Yeah, actually. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that like that's another reason why I mentioned my brother-in-law. He makes cutlery in Japan and that type of stuff. We'd love to get these types of things that are produced in Japan and then in the future hopefully be 100% based on stuff made in Japan. That would be the ideal. Yeah. But you, it's kind of tough because you need to find a balance between made in Japan and stuff that would actually be useful in people's lives and yeah. provide some solutions in the current like current time that we're in. Yeah. And uh, that's that can be frustrating definitely at times, but again, you kind of have to work, um, I guess, ideology versus reality at times to find a reasonable thing to find a solution in your life. Yeah. And you also have reusable stainless steel bento boxes, which are really cool. Yeah, those actually we don't have right now, but those are great and uh, hopefully we can get them again soon. Uh, it's really nice. Those are great quality. And then we hope to sell some wooden ventos in the future as well. But yeah, I think stainless steel is great. Unfortunately, you can't use them in the microwave, obviously, which is kind of a deterrent for some people. But the quality of stainless steel, anything is obviously yeah. really durable Wonderful. and can be used for years. So. Mm -hmm. Allison says, I actually took my own bento box and asked my local to put my lunch in it, and she agreed. So I've, I've tried that yeah. too with some places. It's nice when it happens, but I think a lot of people, uh, businesses are very wary of touching other people's yeah. containers and stuff right now. It's very tricky. Um, but these metal bento boxes, we see these in Hiroshima's museum of the A-bomb, right? That's so cool. Wow, I didn't so, know that. So we know that they are used in Japan many years ago, right? In the 1940s. Um, so this is like a product that was used in Japan and really should be used in Japan again, for sure. 
Yeah, it's interesting because actually, if you look at so many of the problems with, uh, I guess, waste and sustainability, so many of the solutions actually are found in an old traditional Japanese lifestyle. Like uh, Japanese history is like so many great things for like sustainability and just reusing stuff and like living in a connection with like the availability of resources. And uh, yeah, I think it's kind of uh, gotten away from that, obviously, in Japan. There's a lot of, you know, plastic and stuff like that in Japan and a lot of waste. But I think a lot of solutions, not just for stuff you use in your life, but like food and so many things, it's just People just need to look backwards to go forwards, I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, Caillou Package, one of the guys who was a guest in the series as well, he's trying to make uh, bento boxes out of wood or bamboo and, right. and get that replaced in the shops as well. Um, yeah, a, there's a lot of great innovation. Let's talk about your razors. Razors are a great idea. Yeah, those are nice because... Um, Obviously, razors are, you know, the ones most people use are made from plastic. And that's another thing that you can just run through so much plastic without even really thinking about it. And then uh, if you're using stainless steel or uh, I think they're made from brass, actually, those ones, but brass and stainless steel. But um, yeah, that's just another one. They're super high quality and durable and can last a long, long time. And uh, you, I like as far as we see, I, I, I wouldn't see a reason for ever needing to buy a razor again. I'm sure the ones we use now are going to last us the rest of our life. I'd imagine they're so durable. The only thing you need to replace is the blades themselves. And uh, other than that, there's no need for a plastic razor, mm, which is but, great. But the blade is also metal. So the blade yeah. can be recycled exactly right after. Yeah, the blade's metal and the packaging is entirely paper, so it yeah, can all it be great. recycled. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Um, let's talk about body stuff. Sure, body yeah. cleaning. You've got a loofah here. Yeah. So we've got a few different actually. There's the one that's like the regular loofah looking one, and then there's also a sponge that's um, made from loofah, which is really great and has been super popular. A lot of people like using like loofah because it's obviously plant-based and, you know, compostable and it's just easy to use. But, uh, the actual natural loofahs, some people aren't huge fans of them because they're, I guess, kind of rough and, you know, little bits of the loofah break off. And some people just aren't fans of that, which is why we also offered the sponge which is really cool because you can get like a, a pretty realistic sponge and it works great and you can use it and uh, packaging it is easy because it comes dry and compressed and really small and then it expands when you add water to it and you can use it and when you're done with it you can just throw it in your compost and it'll biodegrade naturally. Right, awesome. And you've got um, scrubbing brushes for washing up? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, we've got some, are those the wooden ones you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those ones actually, we use those for washing dishes mm -hmm. and those ones are great. We've been using that for over a year now and um, you can just replace the head over time. Uh, they do last a long time though. Uh, we've been, I think we, yeah, we've been using ours for over a year and we've only gone through we're on our second head, our second brush head. So it lasts a long, long time, which is great. And uh, the bristles are also made from sisal, which is a type of plant. So they're made from metal, wood, and sisal, which is great. So there's no plastic in those. A lot of the time they have uh, plastic nylon bristles, but it's nice to get some made from sisal. So you said you can replace the, the bristles? Yeah. Is that possible? So ours is different from the one you have there because the head actually <laughs> comes off. Yeah. <laughs> I would yeah. like to replace this because this is maybe like 10 years old and right. all the bristles are worn down in one side. So yeah. this is a face brush that I got right. from Lush many years ago. 
It's looking like it's held up pretty well for 10 years, though, I'd say. Like, it looks in great shape. How do you fix that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the ones that we have, you, it's got a metal holder around the brush, and you okay. just remove the brush, and you can put a new one on. Nice. And the price isn't bad. It's just over 1,000 yen. Uh, and then one with a replacement head is 1,800, looks like. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I, you can also buy the heads themselves uh, as a standalone. And uh, some people, uh, if you buy the, I think some people want to buy them just alone and then see how they like it. And then they can just continue to order replacement heads from there on in the future. Awesome. Let's talk about teeth. Sure, yeah. So we have, uh, obviously, we have toothbrushes and we have dental floss. Uh, the dental floss is really cool because it's actually made from bamboo fiber and comes in a glass container. So there's no plastic at all. Usually people use nylon dental floss, obviously. And uh, like I said, the one that uh, we have available is from bamboo fiber. So it's completely made from plants and can be composted after and you don't have to worry about that making plastic waste. But um, yeah, it's really cool. And then the Toothbrushes we have are made from bamboo. The uh, bristles are made from nylon on those, which is unfortunate because uh, there's other options available that don't use plastic, but they're usually made from animal hair. And since we're vegan, we don't want to sell those personally. Um, those, I guess, are compostable, but we want to stick to vegan products only. So we're hoping that we can find some vegan solutions in the future that don't use nylon. But the handles themselves can be composted. You just need to pull the nylon bristles out and then recycle the bristles. And the handle can be uh, composted, obviously. And then we also have a uh, travel case that's um, made from bamboo as well that you can put your toothbrush inside, which is great because lots of people like to brush their teeth, obviously, at work after lunch and stuff. And that's really convenient for bringing to work with you. Yeah, it's so it's so stylish. I love that with the the holder and everything. You don't yeah. you don't have any echo alternative to the plastic toothpaste tube, do you? Not yet. We we want to try and figure something out. That's like another thing we're working on for the future is going to be toothpaste and soap and shampoo and that type of stuff. We haven't gone there yet, but we're kind of building slowly every month and then hopefully we'll get to that in the next few months. Nice. I haven't seen any alternatives. So uh, my son and I are using baking soda with turmeric. Right. <laughs> which yeah. is a little too hardcore for my daughter and my husband. They're like, right. no, not using that. Especially turmeric has quite a strong... Uh, it's like strong... brushing your teeth with curry a little yeah, bit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, Salty, salty curry. Um, yeah. And then you could go straight baking soda, which of course you don't need all the containers, but it's it's right. hardcore. I, you yeah. know, you gotta be committed. <laughs> yeah, that's for but sure. But the dental floss, I've never seen reusable dental floss and plant-based dental floss. This is really cool. Yeah, it is cool because it, yeah, it's made from the fiber of bamboo, and then um, it's. It is really cool. The thing is, it's uh, it's not a. I would say it's not as strong as nylon dental floss. So you do have to use more than if you're using nylon dental floss. But um, obviously, if you're trying to avoid using plastic, it's uh, the the better way to go. Even if you are using yeah. more, you're avoiding using plastic. So it's such a beautiful little container too that you can refill. Yeah. And you and we also offer the refills for the floss itself, so you can continue to use it again and again. Yeah, awesome. Um, one last product here, the earbuds. The ear, ear. cotton buds for ear. Oh, right. Oh, yes. The Right, yeah. Yeah, those are great because those are also made, the, the base of them is made from uh, bamboo also, and they're usually made from plastic, obviously. And lots of people use those all the time, obviously. Uh, and it's just another thing that if you're using them all the time and you're throwing them in the garbage, that's a lot of plastic waste. But the ones that we have are compostable as well and biodegradable. They're made from just 
bamboo and cotton and that's it and then they also come in uh, paper packaging so you don't have to worry about uh, any plastic with those obviously and then we're also in the future going to be looking to sell just a reusable stainless steel type one as well yeah that's awesome are you you always looking around for things that are made in japan or ideas for future products yeah we're basically every day uh, <laughs> that's kind of like something that we're always working on and then we just kind of uh, do it as much bit by bit as we can afford to and then continue to grow and hopefully who knows like we've grown quite a bit we opened in March and it's grown quite a bit since then so hopefully a year down the line we'll be even more and have a bigger selection of stuff but we definitely want to I mean I, I would love to have a hundred percent of our stuff made in Japan and uh, hopefully that's available you know sometime in the future yeah well I know it's hard for a small and medium-sized businesses especially right now during coronavirus but I, I think you guys have a great um, position right here with uh, supplying these hard to find zero waste goods and vegan goods so thank you so much for everything you guys do yeah thank you for so much for the nice words and we hope we can help people uh, we had the idea not as something you know we not I wouldn't even say really as a business but more just we out of a frustration in an inability to find stuff for our own life and hopefully we're able to help other people with the same struggle in Japan yeah well good luck to you guys and keep keep doing the good work and uh, we hope that people watching this will check out your website uh, North Candles Dot JP and my echo life dot JP. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thank you everybody for watching and thank you for your comments and questions. Uh, tomorrow morning we have Matt Alt talking about Japan pop culture and connections to sustainability. So please join us. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. Take care. <laughs>